And we're back. Welcome to another FPL video, or should I say fantasy football video in general, because if you are just here for FPL, then feel free to skip ahead to the marker down at the bottom of your screen in the chapters section, because we are going to start today's video with a recap of how we did in the Champions League fantasy football over the course of this week. So feel free, like I say, to skip ahead if you're just here for fantasy Premier League. But what about this? 107 points for match day one in the Champions League. Only one mistake made in terms of substitutions, and that was to swap out Di Gregorio for Schmeichel. So I really didn't think Slovan Bratislava were going to score. But, I mean, you've got to take it. Kane with 42, Jokrash with 9, Yamal 8, Kimmich 12. The fence smashed it. Saliba 8, Grimaldo 12, Hakimi 7. It's just a disappointment that both Salah and Haaland, the two best players in FPL, couldn't back it up on the European stage this week. But we're obviously going to keep them in going forward. In terms of the SO99 League, that puts us 33rd. Significantly better than where we are in the Premier League. That has to be said on 107. But it is Patrick who leads the way right now with 133. And as you can see, absolutely smashed it. Near enough every single player contributing for him across the board, with the exception of Di Gregorio only scoring three. But Patrick leads the way at the end of match day one. We'll obviously have another UCL Champions League fantasy football video coming up for you before the start of match day two. No Champions League football this week. So this is how it is going to remain for the next 14 days. But until then... We can now say welcome back to those of you that are here for Just FPL. And as always, on a Friday morning when you're looking to make changes to your FPL teams, my advice is to go to the Scout page so you can see what everyone else has been doing. Now, what's most interesting here is actually what I spoke about on Monday's video or Tuesday's video, where the Bukayo Saka is the fifth most transferred out player this week. Yes, Arsenal have Manchester City this weekend, but their fixtures after this weekend are ridiculously easy and Saka is still averaging eight points a game. For 145,000 people to take him out is absolutely ridiculous. It means his price has already gone down. If more people transfer him out today, he could drop down to 9.9, .9, which is ridiculous for someone that's averaging that many points. Obviously, multiple people are absolutely bottling it on Jao Pedro as well. I think that could end up being a mistake. They've got Nottingham Forest at home. The expectation is Jao Pedro will be fit. But after that, yes, they've got some more difficult fixtures. But you've got to look at the ones that people are putting in as guides to who you should be looking at this week as well. Ollie Watkins, top of that list. Not surprising. They've got some nice fixtures. Luis Diaz as well. He's now overtaken Diogo Jota in terms of both points and price. He's now up to 7.8, I believe. Yeah, so Diaz has gone up by 0.3 already at the start of this season. Vardy, definitely someone I'd be advising for this week. Leicester, of course, having Everton at home. Everton with the worst defensive record so far in the league this season. Harlan speaks for himself. Smith Rowe has made a good start at Fulham. But what it all means is you've got to always look at these things. So even like John Duran, even though he's coming off the bench, he's still risen to 6.1 because of how well he's contributing off the bench. Again, I still think right now, if you're going to put him in your actual main teams, I think John Duran is still a little bit of a risk right now. Although, Ollie Watkins did turn his ankle in the Champions League and people are so speculating that it could be John Duran who actually starts for Aston Villa this week. As for my team, obviously it is going to be unchanged because as I spoke about after the first international break, this is going to be my squad of 15 up until the next international break because what I want to do is save up four transfers for that international break coming very, very soon. And to be honest, with the players I've got, this team picks itself. For Bruggen and goal against Nottingham Forest just makes sense. Canate, who has now also risen to 5.1, he keeps his place against Bournemouth. Van der Ven comes in for Brentford at home. Dinya stays at left-back against Wolves at home. Palmer, Salah, Eza, Rogers, Minte, Pedro, Haaland... Honestly, I would be disappointed if not at least four or five of these players contributed this weekend. I'm sticking with Salah as captain. I am very firmly on the belief that Manchester City are going to struggle to score against Arsenal. They didn't score against Arsenal last year. Haaland's record against Arsenal isn't very good. Salah's record against Bournemouth is fantastic. And... I just think there, Salah is the best bet for captain. There was a part of me that was very tempted to go for a Pedro or a Minter, but no. Salah has to be the pick this week for me. If Haaland still manages to score two or three goals against Arsenal this week, absolutely fair play to any of you that do captain Haaland. But for me, 
that's just not going to be the case. And as for Dave's team, I have made one transfer and it is one of the ones that we spoke about at the start of this video and that is Jamie Vardy at home to Everton. Leicester's fixtures are not ideal with Arsenal away after this, but then look at this. Over the balance of the next few games, Everton at home, Bournemouth at home, Southampton away, Forest at home, Ipswich away. It is a very good time to get Leicester players in your team and Jamie Vardy is already sitting here on two goals in the Premier League so far this season with a good run of fixtures coming up for 5.7. His price has gone up 0.2 since the start of the season. But if you're someone that's looking to change around your cheap strikers, if you're someone that started with Muniz, someone like that, that's literally the transfer I made this week. I took Muniz out for Jamie Vardy. I think he's a very, very good pickup. But outside of that, I would honestly be considering looking at Arsenal defenders because I still believe they're going to get that clean sheet against Manchester City. And like I say, after Manchester City, Leicester at home, Southampton at home, Bournemouth away. Fantastic opportunity for you guys to start picking up Arsenal defenders or David Raya in goal as the cheapest option. He is on major form right now. But to be honest with you, I haven't really got anything else to say this week. There isn't too much to cover. I think the options really do pick themselves. If you just look at the fixtures, like I said about the other day, you've got to look at Leicester. You've got to look at Aston Villa. And you've got to look at Arsenal. For me, that is where you should be bringing in players over the next few weeks. Obviously, more on what to do next week in the review video on Tuesday. But those are going to be my teams for this week. Obviously, I need to start getting some points back in the SO99 League because I'm seriously, seriously struggling right now. But thank you very much for watching as always. Let me know what changes you have made down in the comment section below. And I will see you again very, very soon.